<laughs> now we're going to talk about the fanning mill or winnower, which um, basic function is to take the threshings, which is a mixture of seeds polluted with organic material, and separate the seeds from the rest of the organic material. The separation occurs in three steps, really, but generally two steps. One is sorting by size, and the second is um, sorting by uh, weight, really, or technically terminal velocity. Um, and the size sorting occurs with screens. The screens are inclined in the screen frame. The screens shake as the pedal, and at speed they shake pretty frequently. Typically there's two screens. Uh, one screen on top that allows the seeds you want to pass through, but uh, doesn't allow um, seed pods or uh, large twigs or anything to pass through. The top screen feeds its output into this chute. That chute dumps into a bucket hanging on the outside over here. And then the second stage allows the small stuff, like the dust, to pass through, but doesn't allow the seeds you want to pass through. The bottom screen exits into the win winnowing tower. The blower just pulls away from the frame. And as you can see, this end of the blower is a stack, and it has a slot in it that the lower screen exits into. Um, so here's the uh, stack and you can see at the bottom is a tilted screen and that screen takes off the seeds as they fall down and then the rest of the material that's blowing up uh, goes out the top of the winnowing tower. These chutes are just made out of regular aluminum flashing. Folded them by clamping them in the vise and using pliers. When you build your screens, stretch them tight. So the screen has a bottom wooden frame, and that frame is notched in two places so that the screen can hang on a quarter inch metal rod that goes through the frame. At the back, the screen has a string to hold it level and a little notch, and that notch allows the shaker to move. When the seeds or debris get to the bottom of the screen, you just want them to accelerate a little bit and get moving before they leap off the end of the screen. So there's a piece of aluminum flashing at the lower end of the screen. Uh, you'll also notice on the screen there's a little uh, bit of gasketing, cardboard, and uh, this netting is um, drywall tape mesh. It's stapled on with just a stapler so seeds don't get around the edges. The shaker bounces the screens up and down. Just a piece of quarter inch steel round rod. It has a little metal tab at the bottom and a bolt with a roller blade bearing on it. The roller blade bearing rides on this wooden wheel that has a couple of bumps in it. To adjust the angle of the screens, there's these uh, nuts that slide up and down and have grub screws that lock them in place. One for each screen so you can adjust the pitch angle of the screens independently of each other. If you wanted the frequency of the shaking to be greater, you could make a wheel with four bumps and if you wanted the frequency to be less, you could make a wheel with one bump. If you want to change the amplitude, just change the size of the bumps. You could also adjust the frequency by adjusting the gear ratio. You can see the basic parts of the drivetrain are, again, an exercycle with a flywheel. A rear derailleur from an old bike keeps the tension correct. And you can use the uh, derailleur high-low adjustment to adjust the uh, alignment a little bit. At the other end of that chain, we have a triple crank off of a cheap mountain bike mounted on a bottom bracket. Um, and another triple crank on the other side. Um, and so this is just basically a transmission. It allows us to adjust the speeds of everything. The reason I used a flat belt for this rather than any other kind of transmission is because if something jams, I just want the belt to slip. You'll see this flat belt is very loose. If you have trouble 
getting a flat belt to stay on. The problem is almost always that there needs to be a slight crown in the um, flat belt pulley. This flat belt I made from a serpentine belt that I just found on the side of the road. And I just cut it to the right length and stitched it on a sewing machine. Um, and uh, I used the flat side, not the side that runs on the groove belts on a car. And you can use, for flat belts are great because for a flat belt you can use, uh, you can use um, serpentine belts, you can use leather belts, leather or leather belts you snag from thrift stores. You can glue leather belts together to make them longer with any kind of glue works on leather. Uh, contact cement is great, barge cement, whatever. You can stitch the leather with a, with a sewing machine if you want. The shaker bearing is just a front hub off of a cheap bicycle and it's a steel hub which allowed me to weld a couple of pieces of sheet metal to it so that I could screw it up into the frame. The only trick is getting a hub that's the correct width so that the pulleys end up on either side of the wooden frame. You can use a variety of different hubs and get it to work. You can also take the hub shell and shorten it and weld, tack it back together with a welder. If you look closely at this bottom bracket, it's just a cheap steel bottom bracket off of a cheap mountain bike. Very high quality bearing, incredibly high quality spindle. I, again, I've welded some tabs, some metal tabs onto it so that I could screw it to the um, frame. I welded all the holes shut so that debris can't get in to the bottom bracket and pollute the bearing. I also installed a Zerk fitting You'll have to take the bottom bracket apart to weld the metal tabs onto it. When you rebuild it, you'll use new grease and all that, but I put the Zerk fittings on so that the farmer can just casually pump grease into the bottom bracket once every couple years and never have to service it. The bottom bracket came stock with some metal tabs that surround the 2x4 frame. And if your bottom bracket doesn't have those, I suggest you put them on. One of the cool things that does is it allows you to insert wooden shims, and you'll see one right here. And the wooden shims allow you to some side-to-side -side adjustment, so you can get um, the initial chain alignment um, has a little bit of wiggle room, which is great. And I wanted to show you one other thing I did with these crank arms, which is I fabricated my own binder bolts for the crank arms. It's just, it's just a piece of all thread that's the right thread for the spindle and uh, a nut welded on. On the drive side over here, what that does is it transfers the binder bolt nut to the outside of the crank arm instead of having it be recessed. And then you don't need a socket wrench to take it off. You can just use a regular wrench. On the other side, I fabricated an extra long binder bolt. And you'll see that that allows me to mount the wooden pulley that drives the flat belt and the shaker on the outside of the crank arm. Worst comes to worst, you have to buy a bolt. That, uh, that works too. The input side of the transmission has some adjustment, so you can get the transmission turning at the right speed. That's like a comfortable speed for the rider, maybe. That will also adjust the shaker frequency, assuming everything else stays the same. And then the uh, output of the transmission Obviously the flat belt drives the shaker, but more importantly, a chain drives the blower. The blower is finely adjustable, which you'll need if you're doing a variety of crops. If you're blowing too hard, you're gonna blow some of your crop seed that you wanna save out of the winnowing stack. And if the blower doesn't blow hard enough, you're gonna get debris in what you're collecting. Okay, you need very low blower speeds for light crops and higher blower speeds for heavier crops. So here's the blower with its cover removed. The cantilever bearing is just the bottom bracket from, it could be any bicycle with a cauterless crank set. Um, these are great bearings. They, they take a lot of thrust. They're super tough. They're um, ubiquitous. You can get them for free all over the United States by just looking in garbage piles. And if you wanted to just buy a shaft and some bearings, that's pretty cheap. But this is a way of doing it for free that works really well. So again, I've welded some metal tabs onto the bottom bracket that allow me to anchor it. Welded on some pieces of quarter inch bar just to reinforce. Blower vanes are held on to the spindle of the bottom bracket by a trick that I'm going to share with you, which is the trick that makes all of this possible.
which is that a half inch drive socket fits beautifully onto the square spindle for a cotterless crank set. This is the square spindle on a standard cotterless crank bottom bracket and this is the half inch drive socket. This one happens to be a one inch long reach. Um, you'll need a long reach for the project but it doesn't have to be one inch. It matters is that it's a half inch drive and that slides nicely over the tapered square spindle. I fabricated my own binder bolt of the correct length so that the um, socket, the half inch drive socket, can be held firmly on the square spindle. I've just welded some pieces of uh, 3 8 rod onto it at the right distance so that the blower vanes are more or less in the middle of the housing. Uh, and then the vanes have a piece of steel sheet metal to make them stronger. And then the paddle itself is just a piece of quarter inch plywood. Notice there's another zerk fitting. All right, so now we're gonna go over to the other side and go back to looking at how this transmission was made on this side. We have our derailleur and chain. And then we have, an, uh, again, um, we have a fabricated bolt that holds the whole assembly onto the spindle of the bottom bracket. Once again, I'm using the trick of the half inch drive socket sliding nicely onto the square spindle on the bottom bracket to make this all work. Uh, we just have a half inch drive socket, uh, a piece of a rear hub that we cut, and then we found the socket, in this case it happened to be 5 eighths, that slides nicely onto this um, piece of hub shell and then just tacked it with the welder and threaded on a regular freewheel. One other thing that is worth pointing out is that when you adopt this, if you adopt this system, you will not be able to use a regular crank puller to get off the blower parts. And so if you don't have a gear puller like this and you can't borrow one, do not despair because there are other ways pry bar and just got behind the half inch drive and popped it like that. You might be um, tempted to weld the hell out of this thing and like weld it all the way around. That will cause a lot more distortion. What I would do in all of this assembly is is the minimum amount of welding. Just like tack it to hold it in place. It's If you put a good tack on it, it's unlikely to break and it'll be much less distorted and so it'll spin much truer. And of course, the better job you do of setting this up, the more true and centered it will all be, and uh, the better it will work. But, you know, this one I did an intentionally crappy job on, and it still works fine. Um, there's a little wobble, and that doesn't seem to matter.